Hey everybody, welcome back to number one leading ladies. You've got Kaylee McMahon here, you all, you all already know me. Um, we've got Leica here today and I'm really excited to have her on our show. Um, I'm gonna have her introduce herself because I won't do her justice, of course. But uh, as you always know, this podcast and the show is about um, women helping each other to build each other up instead of tear each other down. So that's something that I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about today. Um, Leica, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience? Well, first of all, Kaylee, thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to talk to you on screen or off. Um, again, this is Leika Devta. I am from Seattle, Washington. I've been a real estate investor and broker now for about six years, and I started doing six, uh, fix and flip, um, and I've done over 40 flips. I have done land subdivisions. Uh, I have a bunch of rental properties, and I think the one thing that gives me so much joy through my journey is finding other women in this space and really connecting with them because as we know, this is a men's world and to kind of break through and be you know, on the same playing field as them um, gives me so much joy and strength. You know? So thank you for having me. This is such a great podcast. I've listened to it and just happy to be a part of it. That's cool. That's cool. I hope you got some cool nuggets out of some of them. They're so different, you know, women like yourself who are in real estate. And then we have some women that are not, you know, so I wanted yeah. a variety, but you know, the premise of the show is kind of, you kind of already know what's coming. You know, if you've listened to it, I usually just ask a couple of questions. It's more like a phone conversation, you know, like, Hey girl, what's up? Um, but one of the things that, you know, since you have so much experience, um, starting off in real estate, um, doing more and then doing multiple different things, probably all at once, you know, you probably are saying, okay, right. the project over here, project over here. Um, there's obviously a scaling process from starting off to getting to that point. Um, and right. so you had to have some success. And a lot of people think being an entrepreneur is like, oh, you have all your free time. You can do whatever you want. You can make your own schedule. You can go on vacation when you want. And in reality, uh, like I just mentioned, you know, for the last five months, I had gone nowhere, you know, uh, just mm -hmm. out of guilt, you know, because, and then being bogged down with things to do. So, um, that's not really reality I find. And yeah. uh, what, what I do find is reality is there is always a point in the beginning, especially when you're getting started where, you know, you don't have anything and you're like, okay, are, are you Kaylee? And you, and you took, uh, took it out on your credit cards to get your business started or did yeah. you have parents or did you take a HELOC out on your house, second mortgage? Yeah. Um, how did you get your business up and going through those, I guess, bootstrapping days and then get it to the point where you started having traction? Yeah. Uh, great question. So I, we, we took a HELOC on our primary residence. That's how I got started. And we used those funds to really uh, fuel and fund the business. So with those funds, I was able to do one flip. Then I had a little bit of experience. And then I used that, those same funds to do a smaller flip, which gave me you know, the ability to scale to two, three flips. By the time I did my fourth flip, I was super, you know, I had a little bit more experience and I was super confident to go out and then raise money. My biggest thing was I didn't want to raise money and then fail miserably and not give someone their expected return or like not have the ability to pay them back. That was like my biggest nightmare and I would never let that happen. So I waited for a few different deals. I waited to see that, you know, I could actually do this because my first flip didn't make me any money. Yeah. But whereas flip two, three, and four made me a lot of money. So I was like, okay, now I really do have, you know, that little nest egg and also the confidence to go out and go make, you know, use of other people's money. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I got started. And that's how, and honestly, if I didn't have the ability to raise private money, I would never be able to scale. At one point I was doing eight deals and in my area, a deal could cost anywhere between 800 to a million. So having the ability to do eight deals um, only came from the ability to raise money. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. that's great. Now, when you raise uh, private capital from individuals, there's so many different ways that different types of businesses do that, you know, whether it's real estate, whether it's tech, you know, whatnot. And um, how did you learn the process of knowing how to pitch your deals or have a professional presentation or be able to make uh, projections on what you were doing? A lot of it with flips, you know, is experience saying, okay, well, here's an itemized list of every doorknob, every nail, what it's going to cost. Here's some comps. Is that part of it or is there a lot more to it? You know, I started raising money from friends, um, friends that kind of 
not not even our like family friends but friends that were in the business that i had gotten to know from the beginning of starting my whole flipping career um people that were like part of my network that kind of saw the way that i hustled but weren't able to do the same on their own projects so there they were like you know not being able to succeed in their projects but then they had all the money all the capital so that's how i got started was raising money from those people that weren't able to succeed on their own but then gave me their money and watch their money grow through me and once i was able to do that i think i was able to then you know go out more confidently and say okay i just borrowed someone's 100 grand and i made them 130 um and i gave them a 30k profit within 8 months and that's powerful like if you can do that on just like a small deal that's really powerful so then going into now finding people that i didn't know but i was like building a relationship with you know i did have to have presentations i did have to have like good track record to show them but the cool thing is with a flip and doing as many flips that i had done i could actually show them before after photos i could tell them the timelines that i had achieved these uh, amazing remarkable remodels in and that kind of gave them the confidence that you know i'm not someone that's just going to do one flip and then go i don't know disappear uh, so i kind of you know went i started small i started with people that knew me really well and then went on to raise money from people i didn't know at all right right so does that take like for us to uh, do work with accredited individuals mhm mm yeah 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 exactly same thing cool um and then for y'all that are listening that maybe if i haven't covered this the i use the 1 2 3 rule for accredited there's many other um sub rules like if you're a s corp c corp uh, fund etc but uh one uh 1 million dollars net is your net worth uh, minus your primary residence two uh, you make $200,000 for two consecutive years and reasonably expect yourself to continue doing that as a single person and then $300,000 uh for two years and you reasonably consider yourself to continue that uh, as a couple and there's more but um that's generally like the 1 2 3 rule that that we use so just to make sure that everyone that might be tuning in for the first time is like what is that you know because people will say like oh i'm not sophisticated and it's actually like well actually the accredited person is the one that's more wealthy the sophisticated person just has substantial knowledge really to understand exactly that. yeah so they're exactly. like exactly oh, okay yeah. uh, <laughs> awesome um that's that's great and uh that's great that you had close people family and friends that you know wanted to invest with you um now they always or people always see that progress of um getting started i think they don't usually see things until you get some motion there's always like that beginning stage um and there's learning stages during those beginning stages like you know with your your first flip not making any money you know for me i was really close to that on my first flip same thing um mm -hmm. but i got really lucky i found someone to rent it who was with a huge corporation and they paid for everything and so even if he left it would still be covered so i was like right. well sure i guess you can stay here till the market's good and i may try to sell or finance it but um anyway like there's so much that you learn and i'm still freaking learning every week like right now even um yeah. when you're going through the process of of learning and you're probably still learning as we go what would you say has probably been your biggest uh biggest lesson so far oh my lord um <laughs> i think it's that you know you're absolutely right because you learn something every day um every project you know you classify fix and flip or like multi family investing into one bucket but then with every deal comes so many different learnings right so i think my honestly biggest also most profitable learning has been to evaluate really sit down and evaluate different exit strategies i think once i started to do that and pay more attention to what this building could really be that just opened up so many doors like i started doing more with one deal rather than doing 8 10 deals i could do one deal and just be so much more profitable yeah. right and just like own that building instead of fixing and flipping i could actually own this building if i just knew creative exit strategies that i could use to pull that out so yeah that's that's been my biggest go to when do you think that you learned that lesson early early on or kind of closer to now that i think yeah um i started investing in 2014 so i think there was a property that i did in 2015 that 
came on historical lot lines. And so it was, that was the first time that I was like, okay, maybe I should look at it differently. Like instead of just flipping a house and selling it, what else could I do with this lot? Because this lot was so massive. And that's when I started saying, okay, let me look at like, can I build another house? Can I sell off the land as a different parcel? You know, and that kind of showed me that there were so many things you could do. And now in Seattle too, there is like a new law where you can put a whole detached dwelling unit behind your property just to increase, yeah, like a mother-in-law or dad who are ADU um, to increase, to be able to increase density in the city because there's no real estate, like there's no inventory. You know, so that's another like huge factor too, is that there's so many things that the city is always changing rules. So just keep up to date with it. And so that way you can kind of come up with different strategies as the years go on. That's actually super key. I was asking you kind of when about in your timeline that you learned that just because right now it's awesome to have multiple exit strategies. Like for example, I've got some friends that are doing a syndication right now on an apartment deal in Houston. And I mean, it's, it's the perfect deal. Like I mentioned earlier, trying to have a, a neighborhood or an environment that's one or two classes higher. It's the only B class vintage left in that area of Houston. Houston uh, Galleria. Yeah. Is yeah. it Ashley's? Yeah, you know which one it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Juan is on that one too. So um, we were talking about that and then the rent bumps are huge. Um, but you know, just for the fact that they have like three exit strategies, plus probably another one, we always have the, you know, flip strategy, like, you know, uh, yeah. refi, uh, and or sell. So you have those three always. And then now it's yeah. okay. Now we can convert some, if, if not all to condos. Uh, now we can possibly look at the rebuild cost and based mm-hmm. on the fact that everything around it is a hundred percent brand new a class. Um, yes. long story short, there's like several, several exit strategies. So for me as an investor, that would be where I'd be comfortable because it's like, I mean, literally we can pivot this way, that way, that way, that way. So, yeah. Um, I think knowing that kind of stuff as far as being creative when you exit is you're, you're exactly right. That's a huge lesson. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to be someone that people can rely on during a downturn, you know, because you can get, exactly. Yeah. So you can, and if anything, like the pandemic needs to teach us all, right. Like that you have to be able to pivot, shift, you know, uh, change your strategy as quickly as you possibly can. True. So not to fail. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that is a wonderful lesson. And I hope everybody out there, like you said, you have to kind of slow down to really yeah. be in depth and to think through those things. And sometimes like for me, uh, I ask older people that have, that have done things before and then they probably had to pivot. Someone's done it before. So I'll yeah. ask them to, uh, or someone like yourself, you know, like, well, what do you mean with pivot? How do I do that? So yeah. that's, that's a great lesson. Um, now also through that learning process and starting your business and having the lessons too, there's also wins that we get to have. Um, what would you say period has been your biggest win? Oh, wow. So I was, um, I bought a, I brought, bought a house, uh, to fix and flip in 2017. And through the very first week of owning this property, I figured out that I was able to subdivide my lots Again, it goes back to land subdivision, but it is the truth. I was able to successfully, it took me three years and literally last month I was able to successfully record three lots with the county. So I have an existing house, a beautiful house that I remodeled in 2017 on one of the lots. And then I have two additional lots that I can sell off to a builder or an end user to build like a custom home on it. Um, Homes in that neighborhood sell for 1.5 to 1.6 for a 4,000 square foot home. So I could essentially sell my lots for 500K a piece and sell the home for a million. I bought this entire package for 570, um, you know, and I put in like about a half a million to like fix up the house and subdivide the lots. But that has just been my biggest win. It took me three good years, but at the end of it, like, you know, it was just like, I came out of it feeling like, wow, this is something, you know, if I could do that, then I can do anything. That's freaking awesome. And that's why my eyes are getting so huge is because what that buys in Texas, I'm going, oh my Lord, like (laughs) you can exactly for one of those houses, you could buy an apartment. Like, I'm not kidding. Like my, one of my first, uh, smaller ones, 24 units. Uh, yeah. 24 units was 547. 
Yeah. No way. You know the, okay. So we were doing some research because I just went under contract with a four unit in a submarket in Seattle for 625 yeah. for a four unit. And this is like, I would say a C class neighborhood. Um, and so we were doing the research and the cheapest multifamily in all of King County, which is where I live, um, sold for, and this was a, a triplex, the lowest one sold for 725. So getting a fourplex for 625 is huge, uh, but it's so much money. So, you know, you know it's so funny. Yeah. I'm going, entrepreneur, dang. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> feel spoiled. Well, you know, some of the stuff here is kind of hard to contend with because I'm used to buying stuff at, well, you know, in the, the wake of 09 or 08, I mean, afterwards you're buying stuff kind of how I got these at like 21 K a door with all renovations included super cheap. But now you're looking wow. at it's between 74 and like 115, depending on a lot of variety of factors. So that's really hard to swallow. But then if I, and that includes rehab. Yeah. But oh my if, God. I, if I look on the coast and things, like how bad New York has gotten, how bad LA has gotten, that kind of thing, I'm going, I don't, I don't know. Like, is it, is it going to get that bad here? I believed yes in Austin. That's why I'm actually willing to overpay for a few things in Austin. Yeah. Um, because everyone that is coming in from those cities, they're willing to pay. They're, they're thinking like, I just thought, oh my God, this is so cheap, you know? Um, exactly. And Austin is amazing. Yeah. Austin is just the place to be. Yeah. And it was projected before COVID to grow. Um, so Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Austin, San Antonio, they're all going to be growing, but close yeah. to um, you know, your regular inflation rate. Um, so about 2% per year. And it was projected year over year to grow at 2.24% at minimum in Austin. And that was before COVID, but Austin is education-based, it's tech-based, you know, Tesla's moving there. Their biggest factory in the United States is going to be there. Uh, and yep. there's many other, Apple, I mean, et cetera. So uh, it's, yeah, it's not going to stop growing. So I no. just, I live there so I could do what I do here and go running and, and be like, okay, like let's skip trace that owner because I know this neighborhood really well, you know, stuff like that. So that's amazing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I know. I just bought a building close to, so Seattle downtown has Amazon and Facebook and Google. Um, so I just bought a building there that is totally done down for 1.2 million. And that was six months ago. And that building today is worth about 1.6. So yeah. the appreciation factor is crazy, even through COVID. And we're talking four doors, Kaylee. Four doors for 1.2. So crazy. Now that building, um, is it more of like an office building where you'd have a single tenant or how does that work? No, it's just a, multi a residential multifamily. Okay. It's a four unit building, which I'm going to completely strip down to the studs in, in a year and uh, put in like at least 250, 300K of rehab and raise, raise the building's value to about 2 million. Wow, that's awesome. But yeah, that real estate, you know, is, is key as far as the location, location, location. Location, yeah, exactly. That's why I mentioned with the, um, the stuff now, you know, as far as looking at apartments, that's probably yeah. the biggest thing is like going, okay, you can have a few nice things, but like in that neighborhood, what, what class of a neighborhood is it? What's the crime rate? You know, it, it needs yeah. to be higher. So like, exactly. I mean, it would be okay to, you know, overpay or be close to it for something that, you know, um, you know, like, like the middle of Dallas, like the middle yeah. of, you know, yeah, exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Yeah. So those were awesome. really like the three questions that I ask all of our guests. We have a little bit of time, um, here, if that's okay. We have another like three minutes or so. Um, yeah. actually we have more than that. But um, about another seven minutes. <laughs> but um, okay. so is there anything that if the, if the audience were to ask you um, what message do you want to share or something and something that you want to ask from our audience, what would those be? Uh, you know, I am always willing, happily to give my time to anyone that wants to get started in investing. Um, I know when I first started, like having a good mentor or like, someone that I could follow, a good leader that's actually has a proven track record, that was like hard to find. So I've, you know, I mean, I, I would say that I've had some success with, you know, everything that I've done, that I'm happy and willing to share that knowledge with anybody that's interested. Um, with the audience, what I would say is, hey, like I'm always looking for amazing rental properties. So if you have something that you see, two to four unit multifamilies, even like eight units and under. I am not a Kaylee. I don't buy like 50, 100,000 units, but smaller multifamily, 
I'm your girl. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And, and I do want to, I do want to say one thing. So, you know, Ashley Wilson, we yeah. spoke about her. She so she operations badass. Yeah. Badass. Yes. Hey. No. <laughs> no worries. Full screen behind me. So the Invest Her community yeah. is putting out a book. Um, and what they're doing is called The Only Woman in the Room book uh, for real estate investing. So they curated 20 women from across the country to write a chapter each. And so that book is being published in a couple months. Um, so watch out for that. That's going to be a crazy awesome book because it's got incredible people. I wrote a chapter myself. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited, but that book's coming out soon. And now we can talk about it. We were, you know, we're not allowed to talk about it all these months, but it's coming out and I'm excited and we can share that knowledge. And so watch out for that one. It's going to be a good one. Available on Amazon? It probably will be. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Seriously, like I'm very proud of you. Um, I recently had Ashley connect me with Liz. So Liz and I have a call on Thursday because I've awesome. got an app that I'm coming out with, which is meant to teach women about cash flowing real estate. So across all asset classes, it doesn't matter if it's multi uh, MH, uh, mobile home parks, if it's whatever, it doesn't matter. But if it makes cash flow, I want it in there. Um, so you can find what you like. And then, um, so they were interested in that because they're like, oh, that's cool to put technology with, you know, us educating more women. And the way we're going to do things is by doing it together. You know what I mean? You can't all have your own Love it. thing. You kind of need to put your heads together. And uh, I was also envisioning in that app to have an area where we would have like a biannual uh, women's, not mastermind, not retreat, but just basically like for me, it was like my soulmate people to physically get together. And it wasn't even that we really had to have an agenda or meetings or anything yeah. like at all. It would just obviously come up, but it's more yeah. of a retreat to get away and be able to like, I don't know, go kite surf or lay in a hammock or like me, just put your face in the sand for a couple of days. You know what I mean? <laughs> And be able to get your mental health back because it's so key um, yeah. and be able to surround yourself with those people who are just like you. And they had already thought of that idea. So they are already kind of putting something together like that. So again, we want to brainstorm on, okay, well, how can I reach out this way? You reach out that way and we yeah. put it together to affect more lives. I mean, I'm not going to get to 1 billion female investors in 10 years unless I have help, you know, from other people. So I'm excited. I'm down. If you need me for yeah. that, I'm in. It sounds amazing. Yeah. Totally up my alley. Yeah. I love that. Solve with them. So that would be really helpful actually. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I'm excited. Awesome. Yes. I'm excited too. Let's see. Um, anything else? Um, because you've shared a lot of really good gold nuggets. I'm going to have to like add in these little, um, cartoons later with like little nuggets dropping. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. If somebody were to contact you, uh, what would be the best way to get a hold of you and if they were interested, for example, in learning about um, getting started doing uh, two units, three, four units, what exactly you do, um, how do you handle that and how can they get a hold of you? Okay, so you can find me on LinkedIn. My, just my first and my last name, Leka Devta. Um, and then just send me a message. And what we could do is like either set up a Zoom call or a quick phone call, kind of like an introductory like discovery call. And then we can go from there. And I can walk you through some of my projects, you know, how I got started investing in multifamily or how I made the switch from single family fix and flip to rentals even and burrs and multifamily. Happy to, you know, share that with anybody. Um, so yeah, just find me on LinkedIn and send me a message. That's the best way. Does that work um, if somebody is local and not local or is it better if someone's local in Seattle? Oh, it works. Like this has you know, this whole pandemic has taught us that you can be anywhere in the world and you can connect, which is so amazing. So yeah, anywhere, just, you know, a Zoom call should handle that. Um, if you are local, I'd love to walk you through some of my projects. Um, so that just works, you know. Um, but yeah, doesn't matter where you are. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So if y'all want to get a hold of Leica, just hit her up on LinkedIn, uh, the professional place where professionals hang out. <laughs> um, and again, thank you guys for tuning, guys and gals for tuning into number one leading ladies. Uh, you'll hear us again next week um, on the podcast. And if you have any questions for Leica, she just told us how we can reach out to her. I'll see y'all next week on number one leading ladies. Thank you guys.